Hello guys, on today's video I'm going to show you how to check the HTS series high pop tester with an HTT1S. That's the one you can see right here on screen. I have it right here. This is the HTT1S. You can distinguish this function tester by its button on the bottom, uh, which is the offset button. Then I will tell you how to use in a few minutes during this video. So this tester is used to test the HTS series model. Basically, the function the functionality of the tester. It could be uh, 2800S, the, like the one I have here, uh, 3000S, uh, 2000S, even 4200S. Um, as you can see right here, I'm using the HT2800S. You can see the calibration label on the bottom corner of the, on the bottom side of the, tel the, the reset button, because this is a customer tester that I will use for this video purpose, because I also I need to test it out. Uh, so I have right here the HTT1S, as you can see, it's basically like the same same as the uh, HTT1, except for the bottom one. We're going to use this banana cable, which uh, we are going to connect to the return connector of the HiPod tester, as I'm doing it right now. And the other end, we're going to connect to the return connector of the HTT1S, as you can see right now. And we also have a NEMA connector, a male NEMA connector for of the HTT1 which I'm going to use on the HT and the HIPAA test on the NEMA connector, as you can see right now. Hold on, let me get these wires out of the way. Um, this is connected, let's connect this in, the wire's okay. So basically, if you just connect the HTT1S, you will get this. As you see, it's on pass position and it's still failing. That's probably because that tester right now, I have it on the lower side of the ground limit. Even if you change it, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna bring it up all the way to the max to see if that changes. So right now it's a 1.50, which is the max. Right now, as you can see, oh, now it's passing. It's on pass, so that's great. That's That should work. But if I put it on fail, as you can see, it still passes right now. So what I'm going to show you guys is how to correct all these issues when you try to test it out. All right, guys, I have improved my setup here. Uh, so right now I'm going to do, it's going to lower the ground limit all the way to the minimum. Uh, let's see. Okay, there it is. I'm going to leave it all the way to the minimum. Uh, 0 0.09 still works. That's fine. Um, so I'm going to press the offset button on the HTT1. And by doing this, I'm putting in short the return connector and the ground of the NEMA connector. So I can do this. And now I'm going to turn my ground check switch on and press the red button for two seconds as you can see i have 0 0.08 0 0.09 uh impedance i want to lower that to zero in order to start testing or check the functionality so i press by pressing the offset button and keeping press the uh the red button for more than five seconds as you can see i have the impedance and now it's going to change it's going to change to 0 0.21 that's the impedance of the cables of the htt1 so i'm gonna recheck it again you see now it's on zero that's what we want that point zero three is because it's not on short anymore so that's fine it's still fine so what am i gonna do right now as you can see everything is on pass position and also by the way the uh htt1s the ground has a limit between 0 0.025 on the pass position and 0 0.13 on the fail which means i need to put my ground setting limit between those values as you can see i have it on 0 0.09 which is between those values now i'm going to put on on pass as you can see my high pot of uh, tester passes the ground i'm going to try that again you can see for second time it passed for time it passes now i'm gonna switch it to fail position let's see what happens oh now it's failing oh sorry about the cable it's on in front of the one but you can see like the red indicator is turning on on the ground so it's failing as you can see and now i'm gonna just check the other uh positions you see turn it back to the uh, to the past position it's still and it's passing it's obeying the it's it's happening what's supposed to happen no when i have it on pass it should pass when i have it on fail it should fail i'm gonna check the leakage see i put on fail i start testing also the leakage is failing so it's working correctly on fail position 
Now on pass position, let's start testing. Everything's passing okay again. Second time. Third time, it's passing, so it's obeying. Let's go with the high pod. Let's put on fail. As you can see, the red light, it's turning on, so it's indicating that it's failing when I have it in fail position. Now it's going to pass. One test, it's passing. Second test, it's passing. And third test, let's see, it passes. So this is how you check the functionality of your HTS model with an HTT1S. Now I have the setup, I have the setup and everything's working. And every time you wanna check the functionality with the HTT1, make sure you follow this this process and before testing it because otherwise you probably get a uh either a fail or a pass but it's uh, an incorrect reading or incorrect all right guys i leave you this uh this chart that tells you the compatibility of the function testers with each of the models that were ever created by compliance west uh as you can see uh, we have the hts with no letter at the end the HTP series and the HTPR series. Those are obsolete. They are no longer manufactured by us. Um, we only manufacture the HTPV2s and the HTS models. Um, as you can see right here, you will see the HTT1 that it's, it's not compatible with the, um, with the HTS series models. But there's a way you can test or use that tester with the HTS models. Please let me know in the comments if you want to see a video of that. Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, but let me know. And as you can see, we have the HTRs. Remember, the HTR has...